Providence Mayor Brett Smiley is warning of catastrophic cuts after a judge ruled the city must pay up in the years long funding battle over Providence City Schools. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kim Kalunian and I'm Kayla Fish. 12 News reporter Alex Torres Perez joins us live now with a breakdown of those cuts and how it will impact you. Alex. Well, Kim and Kayla, Mayor Brett Smiley is preparing for the worst as he waits to find out how much money he will have to pay the school district. However, he says that the consequences will be felt across the city. Dozens of students marched out of class Tuesday to City Hall to protest the ongoing funding battle between the city, the state and the school district. The fact that we're in this position in the first place is just completely disgusting. And Mayor Brett Smiley isn't happy about it either. I have little kids coming up to me saying, Mayor, don't cut my sports. And, and, and that is intentional. That is intentional that they put sports and bus passes on the top of the list. What's not on the list? High cost administrators, multi-million dollar consulting contracts. But now Mayor Smiley is getting ready to make some tough choices as he waits for the judge's ruling on how much the city has to pay. The mayor says it could be anywhere from $10.9 million to $85 million, money the school district says is needed. At no point was I or the district ever trying to bankrupt the city, never. I am, a, I am a resident of the city. Why would I want that? But the mayor warns it will be catastrophic. If it is the high end of the range, that is truly worst case scenario. The city already put a hiring freeze in place and asked all city departments to pause any discretionary spending. But more cuts could be on the way, from eliminating all future grant programs for services like libraries to getting rid of additional patrols and even getting rid of community events like PVD Fest and New Year's Eve. The only other way to pay for this judgment is through a tax increase. And that is also on the table. The city council president says she will vet the decisions to make sure the least amount of harm is done, but students say it shouldn't have come to this. We should not have to choose these major parts of our city as like ultimatums. And we were expected to learn how much money the city owed tomorrow in a court hearing, but that has now been postponed until next week. So we'll just have to wait and see. Kim, Kayla. And Alex, you mentioned tax increases are on the table to help cover that cost. Any idea how much we're talking? Yeah, well, the city can increase taxes up to 4% per year. The mayor says that will generate about $15 million a year. Uh, so that ends up costing taxpayers an extra $330 a year for homeowners and $580 for rental properties. But the city may have to raise taxes several times depending on how much money they'll have to pay the school district. It's a move the mayor says he doesn't want to make, but will be forced to do uh, just in order to avoid bankruptcy. Reporting live in Providence, I'm Alex Torres Perez, 12 News. Alex, thank you. And our in depth coverage of the Providence schools crisis continues now with 12 News Politics editor Ted Nisi. And Ted, it can be certainly hard for the average person to keep track of all of the stats flying around, but you've got a few key numbers to put this all in context for us. Yeah, Kim Kayla, obviously it's up to voters and the elected officials to decide how much money should be spent on the schools, but it's important to understand where the city's finances stand right now. According to the Auditor General, the Providence schools currently spend $27,466 a year per student student. That's the most among Rhode Island's six largest school districts. Providence currently allocates 35% of its municipal tax revenue to the schools, and that's the crux of this court fight with the state. Four cities in Rhode Island actually allocate even less than Providence. And here's a number that really seems to surprise people. Providence, Providence currently spends 62% of its annual tax receipts just on debt payments and retiree benefits like pensions and health care. And then finally, Providence's rainy day fund balance is currently at about 5%. Experts think it should be more like 17%. So again, none of those statistics answer the question of how much voters should want to spend on the city or what they should do, but it does help to explain why the mayor is arguing there's not a lot of financial wiggle room in the current city budget. Hmm. All right, some important context there. 12 News Politics Editor Ted Nisi, thanks for being here. Good to be here.